Hello, 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 hello. Welcome to Verbling. I am Teacher Oakley, and in this class, uh, this class is titled Sales 101. Okay, we're going to actually talk about uh, sales a little bit. Talk, we're going to talk about, uh, I've taken many sales courses, so I'm going to share my sales knowledge with you. I'm going to actually talk a little bit about how our English intonation, our pitch range, and how we express things can actually help our ability to sell things and or influence other people. Actually, you know, I know you're thinking, some of you may be thinking, I'm not really interested in sales, I'm a dentist, I'm an engineer, whatever, but actually we all do sales at some point in our lives. When you go to a job interview, you are selling yourself. You're selling your skills or your abilities. Um, when you are talking to, <laughs> when you're going to get married and you need to talk to your future wife's family about, <laughs> uh, you know, marrying their daughter, you may have to again sell yourself. So we we actually use these skills, and and um, it's kind of fun to talk about. Another thing that we're going to do in the class is we're actually going to practice. We're just going to pick up something and uh, some random anything, whatever you got, lying around the house. I'm going to sell you this glass of water, for example. Um, so come on in the class and we're going to practice our salesmanship skills. I have actually been, a, I've been in sales before. It's kind of slightly embarrassing, but yes, I used to actually sell vacuum cleaners door to door. Door to door, meaning you actually knock on someone's door and surprise, here I am and try to sell them things. In my, in my case, vacuum cleaners. Really tough job. And you have to be good at sales if you're going to make any money because you, you make all your money on commissions. Okay, commissions are you sell something for $200, you get 10%. So you, you put, you know, $20 in your pocket. Okay. Uh, actually, okay, as I, as I welcome you to the room, folks are starting to come in now. So I'll, I'll say hi, and I'm going to ask you if you've ever been a sick, if you've ever sold anything. So uh, let's... Uh, Let's see here. Let's start with Rod. Hi, Rod. How you doing? Well, maybe you give it a, <laughs> give the hangout a second to. Okay, there we go. Hi, Rod. How are you? How are you? Uh, fine. Okay. What, what about you? Uh, I'm I'm doing okay. Uh, I was just sharing with people as they're coming in. I I don't know. Maybe you <laughs> catch, but. Today we're going to talk about sales. Maybe we'll practice selling <coughs> techniques. Um, I was just saying that I actually had a job for a while selling vacuum cleaners. Vacuum cleaners? Door. Yeah. You said yeah. door by door? Door to door. Yeah, here, let me type uh, it. Door to door. Um, yeah, that's what, uh, when, you, when you actually walk around carrying your vacuum cleaner and knock on the door. Yeah. Uh, how was it? And it was successful or very, uh, very yes, no. I mean, I did okay, but horrible job actually because it's you're basically you make next to nothing, but you make all your money in commissions. Do you know commissions, right? Uh, yeah. So you you work for somebody else and you got a uh, percent. The, yeah. of the earnings. Yeah, the that's incomes. exact. That's that's right. A percentage. That's right. Exactly. So it very, you know, you'd have a good week and you'd sell six vacuum cleaners and you know you'd make some good money. And then the next week you wouldn't sell any and you'd be starving. So very, <laughs> very inconsistent. Kind of stressful actually. 
And um, actually, I have my one of my problems, and you can anybody if you want to talk about this, please feel free. One of my problems with doing sales is, who sometimes sales can be a little bit, shall we say, unethical. Um, sometimes there's a gray area, uh, people, <laughs> and you know, like they would train me. All right selling my stupid vacuum cleaners, they would train me to use sales techniques that I was not comfortable with, and I, frankly, I wouldn't use. They did not fit my idea of morals or ethics. So, you know, I didn't last very long at that job. So, anyway, uh, Rod, have you ever sold anything? Uh, I'm very bad uh, to, so to sell... Uh, for example, I want to sell my laptop to get a new one, a new brand laptop, more oh, modern. Good. But I always, uh, uh, when I want to sell uh, something or anything that belongs to me, I always uh, lose uh, the money. <laughs> oh, really? Well, I've got news for you, Rod. Later in the class, we're all going to practice trying to sell things to each other. So you, I'm going to let you try to sell your laptop later in the class. But first, I want to talk to some more students. <laughs> hey, Abdallah. Hi, hi again. Hi, teacher. Hello. Abdallah, have you ever sold anything? Have you ever had yeah. it? Oh. I... Uh... I work in uh, the wholesale uh, wholesale market, and uh, so I <laughs> so the meaning saying is uh, ah. it's important to pursue the the opposite or the, the person who can and uh, to buy uh, with your goods uh, and. Uh, uh, let uh, let him imagine that your goods uh, they are the best in, uh, in the, <laughs> the whole market. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, you've got to you know you've got to make your goods appear or seem to be at least the best in the market. All right. Yeah. Uh, actually, Abdallah uh, just gave some good vocabulary: wholesale and retail. In other words, Abdallah probably sells things to the stores. Okay. Yeah. Retail is when they sell it to you guys. When you buy clothes, you buy it retail, prob probably, <laughs> I'm guessing. Um, okay, yeah, wholesale and retail, are both sales. You, you're still selling stuff. Actually, it's probably harder to sell wholesale than retail, really, because you, you're dealing with professionals. You're selling to a business. Yes. Yeah, more challenging, I think. Um, sell to businesses. Actually, I used to sell marketing services to businesses, so I can I can relate. Um, it's actually more difficult. We call that actually in jargon, sales jargon. Um, we talk about B to C or B to B. Have you ever heard that? Business yes. to business, business to customer. Oh yeah. You got it. That's exactly right. Ooh, you guys are some smart cookies in the room today. Okay, very good. <laughs> Yes, you're absolutely right. Uh, B to C, B to B. Uh, okay, uh, Erica, have you ever sold anything? Oh, hi, Erica, by the way. Hello. How hi. Are you? Fine, thank you. Mm, well, I used to work in a boutique. I think it was one of my first jobs uh, when I was just 16. So, hmm. yes, I, I used to sell <laughs> something. Okay. But it's, not, so it's okay what because did, what did customer used to go to the boutique so I didn't have to go door by door so yeah, <laughs> yeah right yeah but you're still selling things and uh, customer service and all of all of that good fun stuff so did you like it did you hate it or, did, or neutral well, I think that I didn't like in that time uh, at those at that time because I remember that all the girls used to uh, earn a commission, a global commission for all the work. So uh -huh. what I didn't like is that just one or two were making all the uh -huh. effort, and everyone was, <laughs> uh -huh. everyone was earning money, and that's something I didn't like. But 
it was not bad because I mean the product was good was good so I I didn't ah. have any problem about selling the, those clothes were very nice so. right okay so uh, another interesting little bit of vocabulary thank you they pooled commission in other words if you pool you put everything together it's sometimes in a restaurant the waiters and waitresses will pool their tips whatever mm -hmm. tips they get they put it in a big pile if there's five people then everybody gets twenty percent at the end of the night right pool. Okay, yeah you, pool you, you pool pool commission pool tips yeah that that's I uh, that sucked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was my first job, so I was doing yeah, a very, right. you know, I was always trying to do mm, the best. Yeah. But I realized that no everyone else was doing the same thing. I, it was not good at the yeah. end. You know? I don't like that policy, actually. No. I, I've worked with it before, I've seen it before, and it's, and, and you're exactly right. That's what happens. You know, you have five people who are pooling the commission or the tips, and one of them is doing 50% of the work. Yeah. Sorry, uh, pool is the meaning that uh, share commission between the sales uh, who work in sales. That's right, Igor. You, you, when you pool something, and you can pool, it doesn't have to be money, you can pool resources, okay? You can pool information. <laughs> In other words, you kind of put everything all together. So if you're pooling commissions, you take the commission money, you know, um, okay, she she had fifty dollars in commissions, she had ten dollars, she had a hundred, and you put it all together and then you divide it equally. Okay. okay. Sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Uh hello. It, oh my goodness. I don't know if I could say your name. What is your name? If yeah, it, Eugenia. You can you, say. I can say that. <laughs> yeah, Eugenia. Eugenia. Yes, Eugenia. <laughs> yes, I can say that. Oh, I feel good already. Eugenia, have you ever done any kind of sales before? Um. Yeah, I worked. I used to work as a shop assistant. For, mm, for for about nine years ago, maybe, yeah. Okay. And I also heard about pooled commission. Uh, it's also used in restaurants. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So, what were you selling, Virginia? I sold cloths, really, for women, and it was really hard work just because a lot of women came to our shop and they interested in ugly clothes, really. <laughs> but I tried, <laughs> I really tried to offer them something better, <laughs> but they didn't listen to me. They just bought uh, clothes with big colors, with like, I don't know what, it was impossible to wear it. But they uh, did. Right, okay. Actually, I think Probably the worst, I don't know, I selling vacuum cleaners was bad enough, but possibly even w uh, worse um, is people who work in, in a bridal shop. Do you know a bridal shop where they sell wedding dresses? Oh, yeah. I can't even, what a nightmare, because of course brides and the bride's mother are so choosy and demanding really horrible customers I can't imagine having that job I mean yeah, I agree and right and exactly you have to sell you know some probably some women that want to get married in a really ugly wedding dress you probably would want to save them from themselves right Eugenia <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah. I think it's not uh, very um, uh, hard to sell a bride dress uh, because uh, they want to marry, so they should buy uh, uh, a dress. So they go into your store and they will choose something. Uh, yeah. And well, all it's uh, your work to show what you have. Okay. Here, let me let me explain why I say this because I have <laughs> I have direct knowledge. I I used to work for a marketing company where we would um, host websites and we would do marketing 
online marketing efforts, SEO, um, which is search engine optimization, make it easy for you to find in search engines, and designing websites and do blogging and for, uh, article marketing, all kinds of things. Any case, we used to manage a uh, bridal shop website. Oh my God! Uh, every day, brides would write in and complain in very, very vicious language about the service, about the dress, about the sizing, about the color, about on and on and on. So it was a daily, actually twice a day, we had to go in because they had like a little blog thing uh, in their website. And we finally had to just get rid of the blog because every day you'd have to go in and like delete comments and it was just incredible. And it wasn't because they were a horrible company either because they did a big business. They, they were making money. They were selling really expensive dresses from France and French designers and they're making money and they're selling bridal dresses, you know, $5,000, $10,000 a pop. They're definitely making money, but wow, it just seems like they're very demanding. I don't know. That, that was just my opinion. That's what I got from working with that company, doing their advertising, that it was very demanding customers. Okay, anyway, uh, Francisco, are you there? Yes, I'm, I'm here. Okay. Have you ever done any sales in your life? Uh, yes, in I I I have to sell Mexican food. Ah. Taquitos. Taquitos. Mm. <laughs> food is always, you know, everyone everyone eats so. <laughs> oh, not that difficult. Yeah. I don't know. But I, I love. Could you tell us I, what I it is? A, I yeah. Tacos. Well, yeah. I don't know. Tacos. tacos. Was it tacos? It's a kind. Or tacos, Mexican tacos, right? Okay, 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 okay. Yes. Okay. Right. All right. But I, I was a bad, a bad seller. <laughs> okay, a bad, uh, you can say salesperson. But but I, I make a, a very good tacos. <laughs> you could sell them to me, actually. I love tacos and burritos. Mm. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, the real ones. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, exactly, the real ones. Uh, yeah, uh, I always get hungry in verbaling classes. It's really weird. I always end up talking about food. Uh, hey, Igor. Yes. Hi. Hi. Have Have you ever? How about you? Have you ever done any sales before? Yes, I have been working in um, um, some domains. Some areas of sales. Ah, okay. Not one, and uh, I, I think uh, three uh, areas of uh, sales. Okay, like what? Um, like uh, um, uh, company that uh, produce uh, software. Ah, okay. Software for businesses. And uh, another was uh, uh, with, uh, but not was only sale, but uh, uh, um, was fifty percent sale is fifty work with customer ah, okay. uh, in transport, logistics, uh, delivery of uh, goods from uh, a country to another country. Ah, okay. With transport uh, and another, what I'm working now is uh, telecommunication services. Oh, okay. All right. Um, so it sounds like there was some, a part of it was sales, part of it was customer service, and maybe even what we call tech support, technical support. Um, not maybe. technical support, but uh, no. when, uh, for example, for transport, when uh, I, um, not was convincing to, I do not uh, call on convincing, but uh, we manage with, uh, uh, delivery. So mm, okay. uh, I should look where is now that truck. Uh, I should uh, inform that client. Uh, he inform me. We work uh, if uh, truck is. Um, okay, uh, I got it. 
Uh, all right. But okay. Now I work in the sales uh, without uh, manage this customer and telecommunication service uh, with um, sell telecommunication services. Okay. Do you like doing? You said you like doing that. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Yes, ninety-nine percent. I like ninety-nine percent. That's pretty high. That's yes. pretty good. What do you like about it, Igor? Uh, salary payment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, boy. Well, can I ask a question to Igor? Sure, Roberto. Go ahead. Um, what kind of service you you sell? Internet uh, and mobile services. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. That means, could you be specific? Because I am a telecommunication engineer. Internet service, DSL, uh, fiber optic, uh, internet connection. So what you have a po a, a, an internet point. No, I work for a company. For a company. Ah, I'm okay, not, okay, I'm okay. Not, okay. Um, uh, I'm not mm -hmm. I company. I'm not offer something <laughs> to. I not only your sell. Owner. Of course okay. not. I am mm. uh, only the sale person in uh, that company that uh. call customers and uh, propose this uh. Uh, services. Yeah. So there you I um, I greet customers with services. Uh, okay. I connect okay. customers okay. with our services. Where do you come from? Sorry. Where do you come from? Moldova. Okay, okay, thanks. Okay. All right, thank you, Igor. Thanks for sharing. Um, okay, I don't know how to say your name. M. Saburi, are you, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. How should I address you? What should I call you? What's your name? Uh, my name is Mirza Ali, and I wrote my first letter, M, and then my surname is Saburi. So I okay. wrote it fully. All right, Merz Merzali, is that right? Merzali. Ali. It's okay. a two part name. Ah, okay. M A Saburi. <laughs> okay. You can call me Saburi. It's now. Sub Saburi. Okay. Thank you. Um, I can hear you, Sabori, but just barely. I, I don't know if there's any way you can adjust your microphone or get it, give us a little more volume or get closer to your microphone. I'm not sure what the problem might be. I can just oh. barely hear you. Uh, okay. How is it now? Is it a, a little better. Okay. Uh, yes, not I can hear yes. you. I I never I never engage in sales activity, but uh, I'm going to. <laughs> to, to sell something for manufacturing companies, you, industrial products, I mean. You are. Product like that. I'm going to, but I'm, I'm, I'm not start yet. Ah, okay, that's kind of interesting. Um, all right, so you will be doing that soon. All right, okay, I'm going to do a, a little, in a little bit after I talk to everyone, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be doing a little bit of a actual sales training. So maybe I can help you out a little bit. Oh, there you go. There you are. Well, hello. Now I can see you. Okay. All right, maybe that'll be interesting for you. Uh, Roberto. Hello. Yeah. Hey again. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever done sales? Mm, no. 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 No, not really. Okay. I, right. I I hope I will be a seller, um, because uh, of my yeah. project I talked uh, no more yeah. no much time before. Right, right, right. Uh, Roberto was explaining that he has a product. <clears throat> he's uh, engineered or helped design some um, medical equipment, and he's going to be. Yeah. Showing that off very soon. Um, um, mm -hmm. Doing some kind of presentation, I would guess. Yeah. All right. So actually, uh, you are going to be doing some sales definitely very soon. And best yeah. of best of luck to you. All right. I'm going to talk to. I'm going to. I'm going to talk to Nut here for a second, and then uh, <clears throat> I'm going to maybe give you guys all some pointers, or I'm going to sort of test you all maybe to see how, what you know about sales techniques. Mm -hmm. Uh. Nut. Hello. Yeah. Hi. Hello. Hi again. Hello, hello. 
Uh, now, have you ever done any sales before? Yeah, I have sales in ice cream, Thai ice cream. Thai ice cream. Yeah, it's, it's in the store. Mm. Okay. See the picture. All right. So, what did you think of? Uh, what did you think of um, my idea about wasabi ice cream and <laughs> and kim kimchi ice cream? Do you know kimchi? Yeah, I know, but Thai people, maybe Thai people, Thai people didn't like. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, you don't think so? You don't think that one's going to fly, huh? In, in the last class, I introduced my idea of wasabi ice cream and uh, kimchi ice cream. I, I didn't get a very good reaction to that. Gonna, that's going to be what we call a hard sell. <laughs> Difficult sale. Uh, okay, uh, let me uh, let me ask you guys. <clears throat> um, when it comes to sales, when we're talking about sales, I'm going to ask you guys some questions and just open forum. Okay, who can tell me? Any of you students here? Who can tell me what is when we're thinking about sales? What is A B C? A B C. No, I'm, I'm not talking about the alphabet. What does ABC in sales mean? Maybe it's the classification of customers in three groups. Yeah? yeah. No. Definitely not. Your first rule that you must know um, always be closing. Sell. You can't sell something. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I know that. Yeah, okay. You can't okay, sell something. Starting. starting and communicating and then finishing the sales. It's a sale process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a sale process, but I've worked with many salespeople who can't close. They can talk to people, they can they make the product sound great, they the they make friends with the customer and everything's all wonderful, but they can't close. And when we say close, that means you get the money. Um, you're not really selling anything if you can't close the deal, so always be closing. That means you're asking for the money. You may have to ask for the money 20 times, but who cares? The idea is to get the money. Um, so the point is, ask for it. Ask for it over again. Ask a third time. Ask a seventh time. Keep asking for the money. All right. Now. Sales 101, and write this down if you're going to be doing sales. In order to sell anything, there are four key ingredients. There are four things or four elements, four, hmm, four prerequisites, four things that have to happen before you get the sale. All right? Can anybody guess what any of those are? Anybody at all? From what point of view? Well, I'm talking about what is the, from the customer's point of view, customer's perception. Okay. And what are you asking? Could you repeat? There are four elements, there's four th necessary things that have to happen from the customer's point of view, and that's a good question, before they will buy. They're not going to buy until these four conditions are met. What? Is the product necessary for me? And do, 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 there do, do, do. are some questions. Okay, very good. You've got. Is, is it benefit me? It will be. Will it benefit me? Okay, wait. Hang on, Sabori. Let me. Let me. Let me just catch up to you. You're. You're ahead of me. First, you must create a need. You must convince the person that they need that object, even if they really don't. Um, <laughs> even if it's something frivolous and silly, you must create a need. You have to convince them that they need the item. Okay? So, Sabori, you're exactly right. Sabori, you're also talking, uh, you also mentioned something else. You have to show them value. In other words, it is, right, okay? Go ahead, Sabori, explain. 
will it will it benefit me? You should so show that it the product will benefit the customer. Right, and part of that is need. Do you need to have it? I, what do you need this for? I, you know, I don't need that. You're not going to buy it. And value, it has to seem like a good deal. So that could be pricing, that could be customer service, extra customer service, free delivery. What it could mean a lot of things. But you, before people buy things, they have to have. They have to think that they need it, and they have to think that it's valuable or a good deal for them. Two more. Anybody? A good, uh, a good ratio, um, value and cost. Value over cost. Okay, value over cost, and that's part of value. That's, tr okay. that's true. There's two more elements, and these are often overlooked. Very often overlooked. Okay, anybody? Going once, going twice. Okay. You must create trust. I'm not going to buy anything from you if I don't trust you. People buy from people. Okay. Um, very rarely do people buy things, even people who buy things on the internet, almost inevitably end up calling and talking to somebody in customer service. I don't know if you realize that. Uh, people like to talk to people. <laughs> People like to buy from people. It's it's difficult to sell things and never ever talk to somebody. Um, it it doesn't happen very often. You sh and and even if it does, even if it's the internet, I have to trust the internet. I have to trust if I put in my credit card number that somebody isn't going to steal my identity and take all my money out of the bank. I have to trust. So even if I, I'm not talking to someone, I still have to trust the website or the magazine that comes in the mail, whatever it is, there has to be trust. If they don't trust you, they don't buy. And, th and that's, there's just no doubt about that. Sometimes I've, I've been in situations where people are trying to do sales, and they're trying to do sales on the phone, and they're asking crazy stuff, like where the, where the person lives, or social security number, credit card credit number. Card number. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Really hard to get people to give you the credit card number over the phone, isn't it, Igor? Uh, no one will give you a credit card number. This is a stupid thing to give. Uh, <laughs> who call but you they do it. to they sell do it. something? Yeah, they, they will do it, but they have to trust you first, right? Yeah, I don't when know. I work... No one uh, from the United States, I think, uh, will do it. <laughs> call on when, you. When I... <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Erica. When I lived yeah. in the United States, I remember I worked in a, for a while in a restaurant and I had to ask for the credit card number to the customers when they asked me, you know, to uh, take out. And they, oh, they okay. used to give it to me. <laughs> okay. They trusted Over the me. phone. Over <laughs> they the phone me. We, we talked here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's kind of interesting. They were American. Food? Okay. What? Can you see this book? I want to show you this book. The psychology of selling. Oh, Brian Tracy. I actually, I have attended. I have actually attended a Brian Tracy webinar. I've actually, you know, uh, you guys know what a webinar is. Yes. All right. You, it's like an online meeting, and many people can, in a group, listen to somebody lecture. Uh, you know what? I've actually seen this guy in a webinar. It's funny that you should. Uh, you should bring Can that I ask up. a question, Rockley? Yeah, sure. Uh, I think there are two view, two point of view about mm -hmm. uh, trust. Okay. Um, because customers want trust in product and trust in a person who sells it. Right. So I think that there is a, a problem because many sellers won't uh, won't sell the product. Uh, even if the product is not is not a big value, uh, so many customers uh, think this, think it. So when I have to buy something, uh, I know that the seller uh, won't want to sell me uh, the product, uh, even if uh, it has not value, not much value. You um, so I have to trust in the product, not in seller. 
Okay. It's a different, you, you understand? Yes, I do and understand. I do understand, and I, maybe I wasn't clear enough. Actually, that's part of when I say it, it, that you have to show, um, you know, I said you need and value. That's part of value. Value also has to do with quality, the quality of the actual product. And we don't just sell products, you know, you know we sell services too. So yes, but you there has to be the, perceived. You, yeah, and you're right. People have to trust the product if they're getting a product. As well as told that even if it has not value, you have to sell. You have to show that is uh, that it, it it has value. Well, or I, some people okay. are very good at doing that. <laughs> so, because they yeah. they are a good seller. Yeah. The, these are what we call uh, the best seller. Yeah. <laughs> but I think there is a problem because you have to create trust in people. Yeah. And and you should do not uh, you you shouldn't do do it if you want oh, to create okay. trust. All right. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Anytime you're talking about sales, Roberto, you're 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 uh, the expression is you're opening a can of worms. You're going to have to talk about business ethics and morals. Where is the line? How much? Because you can come awfully close to telling lies, but not tell a lie. Is it is it ethical to not tell the customer that about a problem with the product or service, or a possible problem? You're maybe you're not lying to them, but you're just not telling them. Okay, something. okay, okay. That you know was what I mean? Nice, uh, day before, and uh, this is, this was the the topic. Say uh -huh. say uh, lying lying or uh, don't say something. Yeah, I mean, if, I, I think that if you have a good product with a uh, big uh, value, uh, you should not do, not say uh, lie. lie. I, I don't yeah, know you know. Okay, well, uh, all right. Let me let me give you an example. I used to sell vacuum cleaners. I said this to the cash the class earlier. Our part of our sales pitch, and by the way, what you what you normally say to get a a, a sale is called your pitch, sales pitch. Part of our pitch was we would tell people, oh, you need to buy this really high-tech vacuum cleaner, very expensive. I won't mention the product name. Very expensive for v vacuum cleaners. And our pitch was that, oh, because you can use it to clean the carpet as well as your beds or your pillows or cushions. Um, in all of these places, there's something called dust mites. Anybody ever heard of dust mites? I know dust mites, not dust mites. Some people are allergic to them, actually. But they're very, very, oh. very, very tiny insects. And th it's real. It's, it's not made up. It's, it's actually real. But they're, actually, they eat dead skin. So you have them on your body right now. They're in your house. It's just extremely... Common and actually, they're beneficial because they actually get rid of du dust. Is actually human skin, by the way, in case you didn't know that. And these small, very, very microscopic insects um, actually are good because they they eat that. That's what they eat. Anyway, our sales pitch was we would tell people, "Oh my God, you have <gasps> you have dust mites." Oh my God! You got to get rid of these dust mites by buying this vacuum cleaner. So we would shock them with, "Oh, you've got insects in your bed!" Ah! When actually, you know, realistically, you have bacteria in your body that helps you digest food. You you have dust mites which which eat the dead skin, so it actually protects you from disease. It's not something to scream about. It's like saying, oh, you have bacteria in your stomach. Well, of course you do. When you eat yogurt, it has bacteria in it. It helps you digest. It's not bad. Yeah. But we would use a scare tactic like that. Or that's what they wanted us to do. Personally, I thought that was unethical. I couldn't do it. But what do you think about the product? It was valuable. Yeah. Yeah, it was a valuable product. It worked very well. 
Um, in some situations, I, I was, you know, I thought it was great if you were wealthy enough, and um, it was a heavy vacuum cleaner, very heavy. So if you're an old lady, I thought it was kind of stupid. You're going to break your back using that thing. But, you know, if you're young or you're wealthy or if you have a big house, it, it could had a, it was a good product. No, no question it was a well-made product. I didn't really have a problem selling it. I had a problem with the ethics of the sales pitch and how they, how they wanted us to sell it. I, I didn't mm -hmm. scaring people with dust mites. It just didn't seem right to me. I, I you know, I don't yeah, know. I, I understand. I had a problem with it. I couldn't do it, so I didn't last. I I lasted like two or three weeks, and I, I didn't use that pitch. I wouldn't use it. Maybe a month. Actually, I lasted like six weeks, but I would not use that pitch. Okay, so sales one hundred and one. Wait a minute. We only got to three. We've got need. People need to be convinced that they need that thing, that they must have it, even if it's jewelry or, you know, a certain dress or whatever. They've got to be convinced that they really need to have it, convinced that it's valuable, that it's a good price or a good deal. Um, you've got to have trust. And one more. Can anybody guess the last thing, the last element of sales? This one is the one everybody forgets, especially... Yes. Initiative. The last initiative. initiative okay, that's... The final best sell. I think is you it? got it. I, I think that's... I, you're saying it differently, but I think, I think you've got it. Um, initiative or, okay, uh, what we might call sense of urgency. In particular, if you're selling something that costs a lot of money, You've got to convince people that they need to buy it now because people like to procrastinate or people will say, oh, I'll come back and buy it later. You only have a little window. You, you have to convince the person that they need to get it right now. You're not going to have a chance later. There's many different ways to do this. This is why every store on earth has sales. They're creating a sense of urgency. There is a store in New York City. Um, I forget what it's called. Maybe it's Crazy Eddie's. Anyway, this store, I went to university in New York City in 1980. The first time I went to the store, they were having a we must sell everything going out of business sale. That was 1980. It's now 2013. They're still having a going out of business, we must sell everything sale. <laughs> it's for 33 years they've been going out of business. We must sell everything. Sense of urgency. Okay. That's why everybody has sales. Actually here, you know, it's very funny. Here in the Philippines, I I laugh because uh it's very funny. What they do is many of the malls have sales. What they do is Two weeks before they have the sale, the price of something, okay, I'm going to, the price of a, a comb, okay, here I have a comb. Price of the comb is 50 pesos. And then two weeks before the sale, they make it 100 pesos. And then they suddenly have a 50% off sale. Oh, you must buy. Only three days left to buy this comb for 50 pesos which of course is the original price. So they do that all the time and I've actually seen that, it and that caught is vanished them. here. That is really? Vanished? Yeah, because we have a, you know the the sale time every year in the uh, after, you know, in January and all, on August uh, and yeah. if they catch the people who is uh, you know the proof that someone was uh, just put in that they make a sale in the you know in the prices uh -huh. and it's not true they they can be punished by law really yeah. oh yeah yeah interesting in Italy too really yeah it, I, I am, I am that's right <laughs> oh you are in Italy okay yeah <laughs> sorry <laughs> I didn't well we have confirmation you. okay yeah, I have confirmation, and it's it's good. Uh, yeah, okay, <laughs> right. Okay, 
I trust you now. I'll buy anything from you. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. My last uh, as kind of a tactic when you're when you're selling, if you are the seller, if you're the salesperson, very very helpful. Uh, you need to assume the sale. In other words, you mentally put yourself in the position where y you're thinking it's already sold. You're already convinced that it's sold. Actually, this is uh, this is actually your your boy Tracy there, who who had the book with uh, Brian Tracy. This is one of his fundamental yeah, ideas. This is the fourth uh, point. From your list? Uh -huh. Actually, no. The fourth point was sense of urgency. You oh. have, uh, yeah, yeah. Sense of urgency, or you know, so whoever said it, initial the initial reaction to buy. You have to trigger their need to buy. That's part of it. They have to feel like I need it now. Um, but this it's is impossible. This is uh, no. depends on each uh, customer. This is if you will insist, mm -hmm. if you will, uh, they yeah, they you will not buy anything, and you will create uh, another reaction. So uh, that's very true. You will be very, uh, very persistent. Yeah, it should be uh, not. That's, that's true. You will lose customers. People will say, well, I don't want to buy it right now. But you will, you will also lose customers if you do not say, create sense of urgency. Um, I know selling like marketing services, advertising, when I was doing that, if we didn't try, if we didn't say, oh, I can give you a reduced price if you buy by next Friday, maybe I would have to meet them two or three times. But if I didn't do that, I never would have sold one account, honestly. Because whenever I didn't do that, people would just say, oh, I'll talk to you next week, next week, next week, next week, next week, next week. People, human beings, we're humans. We have a natural inclination to procrastinate. People do. If they think they can do it next week, they're going to do it next week. If it's, especially if it's spending money. I do it all what the time. What does it mean, Ugly? Procrastinate. Procrastinate? To put things off or delay. Delay action. For, okay, okay, okay. For, you know, if you're a student and you have homework over the weekend and you do your homework Sunday evening at 11 o'clock at night, you may be a procrastinator. Okay. I got it. Yeah. Okay. Most people are. I am. It's human. Anyway. So, yeah, I, I understand, Igor, there's a balance. You don't want to be too pushy, <laughs> and you don't want to appear to be um, you, um, giving the, you know, you don't want to hold a gun to the customer's head and say, buy now, or I'm not selling it. No, obviously, part of building trust, all of this is, has to be balanced. If I want to build trust, I'm not going to have a gun pointed at you, because that's crazy. So they will uh, not talk with you, and it's all. Okay, then and it may be different. In, be too persistent. It okay, and it may be different in different countries. How much you can get away with? How much persistence? That's definitely going to be true in different cultures. It's going to be different. Um, but I am hard to sell. <laughs> you're hard to sell. Yeah. Actually, that's an interesting question. Maybe we could finish with that. We didn't really get a chance to role play, so that's okay. I'm going to do the class again, I guess. That's all right. So, are, why do you say you're hard to sell? What? You're hard to sell I, to? I hate, well, when I need something, I go to buy it. I don't need anyone to tell me what I need. I hate that. You know, I hate that someone <laughs> come home and tell me, we have this and we offer this. and I hate that. I can't stand that. I'm sorry. I know they're doing their job. I know everything. I respect them. But I just hate it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, would, you would hate shopping in the Philippines. Uh, oh w one of my culture shocks here in the Philippines is that every store, whatever it is, clothes, doesn't matter, restaurants and stores, have two or three times more salespeople. Supermarkets, oh my God, there's like 10 times more salespeople or clerks than there is in the United States. It's really crazy. And they're constantly asking you, can I help you? 
hello, sir, what can I get for you? <laughs> really crazy. <laughs> Actually, when you walk into a fast food place, McDonald's or Jollibee's, whatever, here in the Philippines, everyone runs up to you right in your face. Welcome to McDonald's, sir. Hello, welcome to McDonald's. We're happy to have you here. Oh, scary. It's really frightening, actually. It's very funny, and uh, there's. it took me a while to get used to. It's culture shock. So if you don't like having people bothering you when you're shopping, don't come to the Philippines. Don't shop in the Philippines. Trust me on that one. I, I yeah. worked with Philippines guys <laughs> in the cruise right. ship. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Filipinos are everywhere in the world. <laughs> I know how they are. Oh, my God. Yeah. We used to call them piranhas. You know piranhas? <laughs> <laughs> what? You know, the fish. The fish oh, the piranhas? That yeah. eat with feet. people? Yeah. Why? Yeah, because when, when I was a waitress there, I was a waitress uh. there, too. Oh, my God. I've been everywhere. Okay. <laughs> uh, they they were always like you say right now you know I was I didn't like to go into the customers and offer them like something that they don't want to I, I uh, knew because of their faces but they right. were always like that you know there 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 oh my god so we call it piranha <laughs> oh I get it yeah okay so all right now you've confirmed my information very good. <laughs> Yeah, it's true. Yeah, I I mean, they they really go overboard on the customer service, but it's a cultural thing. A as we're saying, it's different in different cultures. It's not bad. It's just different. That's all. Um, yeah, they were making money. They were good at that. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, there you go. Good for them. Good for them. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> all right. Uh, Amar. Hey, Amar. Hi. When did you come to class? I didn't see you sneak in. Maybe uh, a ten minute or. Uh... Oh, okay. Uh, Amar, are you a uh, a hard sell? Are you hard to sell things to? Uh, here in Saudi Arabia, we don't have uh, someone knock the door and uh, tell you I have a product I want to sell. Mm -hmm. We don't have that. Okay, yeah. but okay, but how about when you're at a store? People try to sell you things. Actually, I don't go to the store <coughs> if I don't want to buy things. <laughs> yeah, I okay. I don't like to go, but just watch. Yeah, okay. If I have the money, I go and tell the man I need this. Just buy it. Get out. Or, yeah, right. You don't window shop. No, I don't have window shop. Yeah, I, I, I don't window shop. Yeah, okay. I don't either. I don't even understand it, Amar. Actually, I know many people like to go window shop. They'll just walk around the mall for hours and and look at the things inside the stores, but not buy anything. I don't really understand it myself. I get really, really bored doing that. Um. <laughs> I don't really get it, but uh, okay. Anyway, Igor, how about you? Are you a hard sell? Sorry. Are you a hard sell? Meaning, if I'm trying to sell you something, is it difficult mm -hmm. to sell you things? It uh, depends uh, what uh, product you will sell. If uh, you will sell something uh, good and uh, logical to, to me, I will buy, of course. But okay. if you sell a uh, vacuum cleaner, <laughs> <laughs> I don't need one. <laughs> All right. But you will have the uh, the insect in your stomach, uh, the the animal. Uh, yeah, stomach. right. You have dust mites. Yeah. If um, you will sell this vacuum yeah. cleaner on price, uh, that uh, um, I can go in a store to buy another vacuum cleaner, simple. I will buy. Yeah. It. But if you sell me the ten uh, times, uh, how yeah, say? ten times the price. Yes. Uh, yeah. So I will not buy. Yeah, I I know. <laughs> I would never buy one of the vacuum cleaners that I was selling. To be perfectly honest, they were too expensive. <laughs> <laughs> they were expensive. They were nice, but they were crazy and expensive. Dust mites. Yeah, dust mites. Leonardo da Vinci, are you there? That's very funny. Hey, Leo, are you there? 
I feel really funny calling in hey. order da Vinci Leo. He should be an Italian guy. Yeah, he definitely should be. Actually, hey. oh, hello. Are you speaking Leo? about Leonardo? About yeah, you, yes. Leonardo, Leonardo yeah. yeah. Excuse me, I didn't under understood uh, Leo. Leo, you say Leo. Uh, Leo, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, Leonardo, or Mr. Da Vinci, I guess. Perhaps I should say. <laughs> uh, are you, in fact, Italian? Yeah, I am Italian. All uh, right. This is the first time I enjoy you because uh, it's a really hard time for me uh, to find uh, free times. Ah, uh, okay. Especially in the, in the morning. Okay. Where do you come from, Leo? Leo. Uh, near uh, Mantua. Okay. And you? Where's that? I live near Florence. Ah, Florence. Good. Yeah. Very, very nice city. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, Leonardo, have you ever have you ever done sales before? Uh, sales. You are speaking about uh, to sell product and shop. Uh, yeah, products, services, sell anything. Have you ever done sales? I never uh, sells uh, nothing. Ah no, okay. Uh, are you a hard sell? Are you hard to sell things to? If I'm selling you a vacuum cleaner, for example. <laughs> Are you going to tell me to get lost? <laughs> Apparently, I, yes. <laughs> I didn't understand very well because uh, the audio is in, okay. It's not good. Uh, okay. Sorry about that. I was asking if uh, if you're hard to sell things to. Uh, we call that a, 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 I'm a hard sell. I don't buy things. Cliente difficile. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Roberto. Uh, generally, generally, when I I have to buy some things, uh, uh, the problem is uh, that uh, it's really hard for me to find what I want. Ah. And, uh, okay. Yeah. And uh, some very very often when I go to shop, uh, I so I see. A lot of things, but uh, it's uh, it's very difficult for me to find what uh, I like. Uh, I really like. Okay. And uh, okay. sometimes when I find, uh, I buy. Uh, for me, uh, there is the problem with the price because if I find some things uh, uh, who like, I I buy. Okay. All right. So maybe uh, there, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I actually, I think me too. I I'm a little bit choosy, or picky, or discerning. Actually, you're a. We know that word in Italy, choosy. <laughs> right? No. <laughs> Why because is it? Of, uh, position. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's not a foolish. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Our, our edition. Anyway, we are stupid. We are choosy. Oh, okay. All right. Inside joke, I guess. Had to be. Yeah. Had to be no, there. It, anyway, it is not okay. a joke. <laughs> yeah. No. Okay. Unfortunately, no. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I'm also sorry to have to say goodbye. I'm going to have to end oh, the broadcast okay. now, and I'm gonna finish the class. Uh, thank you all for coming and sharing, and um, I'll be talking to you all again real soon, hopefully. Thank you, Oakley. Have a nice okay. day. Thank you. Have, Have a nice day. day. Okay.